Thank you, Prof. I indicated to you earlier on when you asked for my bio, I said people who have bios are those who have published harotent in something, articles, and I don't have that. <laughs> One day when I have that, you'll introduce me properly. Colleagues, we are called to take action. Um, when we were planning for this, we were thinking, the main thing for us is to make sure that people, you know, we create awareness. There much needed awareness. Awareness on the national development, which is what um, Glenn has just done, also talking about international developments. Everybody else today has talked about uh, international developments in open access. Now the call is for us to take action. Now Glenn, on his own, as a representative for all of us, all the 26 institutions, and the um, research councils, he cannot do it on his own. He cannot represent South Africa in order for us to move over to that desired state of open access. Each institution has to play their role. And the time is now for each one of us to play our role. So what will be our roadmap? What are we going to do after learning about all these beautiful things that will take us to spending our money wisely? A lot of work has to be done. I heard Gareth earlier on referring to an extension of what used to be Open Access 2020, he mentioned Open Access 2021, meaning from the 1st of January uh, 2021. So we probably have a year learned to continue creating this much needed awareness, con continue to making sure that we have the required infrastructure, the expertise, in order to make sure that we as a two universities contribute towards the national roadmap. The first step will be for us to endorse Open Access 2020 initiative. When we were planning that, we said, let's also ask for a declaration. Let our attendees also sign a declaration so that they can show us that yes, today they have learned about what this movement is going to do for our research um, scholarly output. I don't have to keep on repeating to you the reasons why all the speakers today have explained the reason why we have to take this route. So we are asking you then to sign the declaration. We have two of them, one over there, the other one over there, but I'm gonna read what we have come up with. We are, we are saying we, and we would be the community of the Central University of Technology and the University of the Free State, hereby declare that we support the call for publicly funded research to be made available in open access publications for the public good. This implies that we, all of us, agree to making open access the default in scholarly publications. We will convert the resources currently spent on journal publishing into funds to support sustainable open access business models. And we will collaborate on a swift and efficient transition for the benefit of scholarship and society at large. After all the deliber deliberations, trying to show everybody the rationale behind moving over to open access, from subscription-based to open access publishing model. And so we are asking you to say to us, yes, we have heard you, we understand you, and we will sign. We believe in the cause. And as part of um, trying to know that, yes, you do understand, we're going to ask you to um, I don't want to use the word assess, but probably is to assess 
whether yes, we have reached that today. So Carmen is going to come here and explain to us how we're going to do that. But before we do that, Carmen, um, this consensus doesn't end here. When I'm referring to we, I'm not only talking about the two university libraries. I'm talking about management. That's why it was very important for us to have our leaders with us today so that they can understand as well the rationale behind this move. So we're talking about management, we're talking about researchers, we're talking about finance departments. Everybody has to be on board. Everybody has to grasp this. Everybody has to say yes. We understand and yes, we declare that we will support the steps that will be taken nationally to support this move. There are a couple of things that would have to be put in place by each institution, but I would recommend that, Giuliano, that we, talk, we work together, probably from a team, and make sure that both our universities have the required infrastructure to make sure that we are ready. And whenever Glenn says, hey guys, I need this type of information, hey guys, I need this data, we are ready uh, to provide him with that information so that he can um, proceed with the national um, bigger picture. Open Access 2020 expression of interest, which our principals will then sign on behalf of our institutions, affirm these principles. It says, we aim to transform a majority of today's scholarly publications from, open, from subscription to OA publishing in accordance with community-specific publication preferences. Now, this publication preferences will be determined by the, the, the team that will establish in order to make sure that our researchers agree and believe that as far as we are concerned, these are the publication uh, preferences that we will implement. It goes on to say that at the same time, we continue to support new and improved forms of open access publishing. So what we are pledging as the two libraries is that we will keep on um, ensuring that our researchers, or rather everybody, management, finance department, everybody, is kept abreast of new developments in open access publishing model. All the libraries internationally uh, celebrate Open Access Week in October. We will make sure that we make use of that opportunity to ensure that all of us are on board. The second principle says it's a bit long, but I only read the most important part. It says we'll pursue this transformation process by converting the resources. We've already referred to that. The two universities, we know that we have our funds as libraries. We are spending 58 million on subscriptions. We still have to find out from DRD how much they are transferring to the researchers for APCs, a lot of money, I suspect. So we need to come up with workflows that will work for all the parties in order to make sure that in the long run we do have funds that will be used for open access publishing. The last one says we invite all parties involved in, publish, in scholarly publishing, in particular universities, research institutions, funders, libraries, and publishers to collaborate on a swift, again the word swift, because open access uh, 2020 talks about going full open access immediately. On a swift and efficient transition for the benefit of scholarship and the society at large. So we're going to, to, to require everybody's commitment in ensuring that in the long run, we have people like Professor Aba, Abandanga. Aba, Amba. People are that excited about the possibilities of open access. And so a few things that we'll have to do, for example, in mapping our position, we'll have to make sure that we have policies in place, infrastructure, procedures, we do have open access policies. We might have to review them, you know, the two parties, and ensure that um, what was initially an open access policy becomes an open science policy and, and you know, capture all the new developments in open access. And so if maybe 
um, CUT and um, Solplaki University libraries have not had not developed the open access policies because we are now working together. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. All that we'll be doing will be, we'll be sharing expertise and ensure that all of us are on par with regard to the guiding documents that have to be in place that university management will use to convince everybody. Another thing that we have to do uh, in terms of uh, mapping our local roadmap will be to analyze and assess uh, uh, our leveraging power. What, what um, Glenn has just done that to see how far we are in terms of our uh, financial and publication data. We need to determine exactly where we are. What is our status quo? What is our context? Where are we? Where are we operating from? So that we can see this is where we'll be going in terms of um, this publishing model. So a lot of work that we have to do to get all that information. We are librarians, so searching for what we need to know the tools that we have to use. We we'll also have this tool in, in the form of Glenn. Um, we we'll lose everything in our power to make sure that we have the context of both our institutions. How much are we spending? Where are we publishing? How, how many uh, publication units are we producing annually? And of course, the most important part, engage with all our authors and administration. The University of the Free State would like to be a research-led university. And that would mean we'll have to build a community of scholars. So in order for us to get to a stage where we can contribute towards South Africa producing not 1% anymore, but more research output, all of us will have to do something. So as the University of the Free State, we are going to make sure that we contribute towards building community of scholars where everybody, right from an undergraduate student, right from day one, he or she is already familiarized, familiarized with research so that by the time they get to where our professors are, I mean, at 34, we never used to have professors at this age who have produced so many articles. So it can have as many of those kinds of people who can produce articles sooner than later. And that's why I was referring to that Digital Scholarship Center, a service that the library is going to, to lead in ensuring that everybody is supported and ensuring that all the challenges are being addressed. And so engaging with everybody will be about what do you need? What can I do? Do you understand the, the, the final production in terms of publishing in open access? And of course, we'll have to then prepare what Ed Land referred to as post-termination access plan. Executing our transformation plan. What will happen if Stanley says, guys, we cannot continue subscribing to a certain publisher. What now? So we have to, to prepare for any eventuality. Because like I said earlier, we have to take action. We have to be ready for this di disruption. I liked this uh, short paragraph from the open access expression of interest. It reads as follows. Based on current world publication trends, with commitments from a relatively small number of global research intensive institutions, remember we are not there, we could reach the turning point by our 2020 target. So people are positive that this is doable. But the involvement of, ins of institutions from every geographical and academic constraint, con context, is essential to creating a truly open and just information environment, close quote. It, it simply means all of us, all our contributions will add immensely towards ensuring that we win, we win in the true sense of the word, this fight. It further says, your action will make the difference. 
So we need to make sure that from today onwards, we go out there to all our academics, all our researchers, and make sure that they understand what we have gone through today in a manner that we understand it, so that it can be then smooth sailing when we prepare for our local roadmaps. So Giuliano, I am saying to you, my brother, let's do it together. We have a year to do it. Thank you very much. <laughs>